Even kijken wat ik nou gekregen heb. De perskaart. Accreditatie om te werken als journalist in Zimbabwe. Met een mooie foto erbij. Ik lijk een beetje op Bugs Bunny. Maar dat is me nog nooit gelukt. Om een perskaart te krijgen in Zimbabwe. Want alle jaren dat ik hier als journalist heb gewerkt... kon ik dat nooit officieel aankondigen. Omdat de regering hier geen buitenlandse pottenkijkers wilde. Terwijl alle geweld hier plaatsvond. Dus ik kwam hier eigenlijk altijd als een soort uh, dief in de nacht aan op het vliegveld met knik in de knieën. Kijken of je niet gevolgd wordt door de geheime dienst. Zorgen dat je telefoon niet wordt afgeluisterd. Zo was werken als journalist in Zimbabwe, maar dat hoeft kennelijk tegenwoordig niet meer. Tegenwoordig krijg je dit. Perskaart. Let's go. Okay. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Wait, what is it? What is it? What is it? Ah, dear, don't. Yeah, yeah, boys, yeah. Smart, this is free. It's yours. Smart, smart. Not my, it's not my, it's not my taste. Thank you, thank you. Next time, next time. Next one. Yeah. Weer zien met de hoofdstad van Zimbabwe Harare. Ik was hier vijf jaar geleden voor het laatst. De economie was ingestort, er heerste cholera. Politie en jeugdbendes maakten jacht op oppositie en buitenlandse journalisten. Voor het eerst in dertig jaar leek de almacht van president Mugabe werkelijk in gevaar. En nu? Mugabe zit er nog. Zie je dat? Dat is de, de haan. Daar boven op dat gebouw, symbool van de regeringspartij van Zimbabwe, de ZANU-PF. Het hoofdkantoor van niet alleen de regeringspartij, maar ook van de geheime dienst van Zimbabwe. Ja, een gebouw waar we jarenlang met een hele grote boog omheen hebben gereden. We created democracy because we fought for one man, one vote here. Toen Mugabe na onafhankelijkheid van de Britten aan de macht kwam, werd hij geroemd als de onderwijzer van Afrika. Zimbabwanen zijn beter opgeleid dan generatiegenoten elders op het continent. Maar twintig jaar later vroeg die generatie om wat ze in de schoolboeken hadden geleerd. Democratie. Met onderwijs had Mugabe het paard van Troje binnengehaald. De voormalig guerrilla Mugabe zag het als een onvergeeflijk verraad en wist maar één manier om op zulke kritiek te reageren. Met keiharde hand. Paper, paper, paper. Good morning, how's it going? I'm fine. Yeah, very good. Do you have the Herald for me? Yes. Oké, en Daily News? Yes, yes. Wat else? Sunday Mail? Wat else? This one. News H. How much is that? Five dollars. Five dollars. Dus het is all dollars. Ja. Yeah. Eh? You don't mind? Ja. Yeah. Uh, about een No, thanks. Thanks. Thanks very Sorry. much. Oké, okay, thank you. Dat is toch gewoon heel opvallend, hè? De Herald, dat is de spreekbuis van de regering van Zimbabwe, van de ZANU-PF. Maar in het nieuwe Zimbabwe, government officials milk health fund. En zo staat er... De een op de andere dag, de een op het andere schandaal, hier afgedrukt in de regeringskrant. Iets wat echt ongehoord is. Want ineens is dus de regerende kliek van Zimbabwe kritisch over zichzelf geworden. Veel lijkt veranderd in Zimbabwe. Maar ik vraag me af of het echt is of de koor. Hoe ver kun je gaan in het land van Mugabe? The number you have dialed is incorrect. Please check the number and dial again. Ik ga door mijn oude lijst met contacten in Zimbabwe. Een land verpakt in een lange lijst van nummers waarvan velen niet meer werken. Gestorven, vermoord of gevlucht naar het buitenland. Zimbabwe is een land van vertrek. Hallo? Hallo, is dit Mr. Changwa? 
Yes, it is. Yes, uh, you're speaking to uh, Bram from Yulen. Oké, okay, wat? And that tall guy. De man die de telefoon wel beantwoordt, had geen enkele reden om te vertrekken. How are you doing? I'm good. Long time no see. Yes, yes, yes. How have you been? In het Zimbabwe van chaos en crisis wist hij juist stinkend rijk te worden. Yeah, everybody always thinks that Zimbabwe is is declining and is. No way, no way. Remember this: we are the second largest platinum producer in the world. We are, if not number one, we are the best diamonds space in the world. So those two alone, without talking about the other minerals that can be found in Zimbabwe, let alone the agriculture that's in Zimbabwe, we are number one. And you're active in all those in all yeah, those sectors. I mean, I mean, I'm not into mining, but I'm into agriculture. I'm into industrial, you know, manufacturing. I'm into heavy engineering, and then I'm into property and infrastructure development. Property. Property. And so infrastructure. You, you built. Oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. Yeah. Zimbabwe is the best place you can invest and get a very high return in Africa. We don't have a war here. There's no gun, guys gun, running around gun-toting all over the place. There's nothing like that. But just the negative publicity, which is, of course, of course, for those that want to stay outside, stay outside, whilst we make the money. That's what it is. Uh, which which, which cars do you have? One, two, three, four. Uh -huh. These cars are here, but I don't know whether they're drivers. There's okay. that combi over there. Yes. Yeah, which is bigger than yours. Where's the Rolls? Uh, you want to use the Rolls Royce? I think Rolls Royce is fine for me. So how is it driving? This is a smooth flowing machine. So when do you drive it? No, I hardly, you know, unless there are functions. Uh, I've also said, okay, for the benefit of my community, they can hire this vehicle for weddings and special events, right? So I don't, it doesn't become an eyesore to people that, oh, he's shining. No, you can have it, pay for it. The president's daughter and her husband used this for their wedding recently. Oh, really? Just, yeah, just that? and the Bentley, yeah. Oh, so they drive your car? We, they, they hired it, so I mean, it's business. This is prime, right? Eh? A, a location. Prime, prime, prime. And this is 128 bedrooms. So five, so five star hotel. We want a five star. Even the president uses this road every day to his house. Mr. Mugabe. Yes. So you have, this is off the road to the president's house. Again, more. Well, that's the one up on it. That's your uncle, huh? Yes. Yeah. Yes. When was the, <laughs> when was the last time you saw him? I see him every day. Really? Yeah. Or you like as in you wave oh, to the motorcade, or you really he meet him? Passes through my house up the road. <laughs> he passes through here every day. Yes. I mean, he's available. Uh -huh. If there's any business I want to discuss with him. Yeah. Yes. You do business with him as well? No, there's no business I do with him. He's the president of the country. I'm a businessman. Yeah. You know, if there's something that we need as business, I go and see him. Yeah. But it was never like uh, when you came in for business deals you said, hey, I'm the cousin of the president, don't no, forget. I no, don't, I don't go around saying that. I don't go around. Those that ask me about it, ask me because they had somebody talk about it. Yeah. And I confirm it. But it's not like, I mean, that's something I can use to go and do deals with somebody and so, no. No, because this business has nothing to do with his personal life. It has got everything to do with me. But he turned 90 uh, this year. Yes, and so we celebrated you, that. And you, you go to his birthday. Yes, and yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Congratulations. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. How is he doing? He's doing very well. Yeah. Very healthy. I mean, you'll be surprised. At 90, he's walking, speaks very eloquently, and is very clear. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the man. He's a hero here, you know. Yeah, when you talk about Mugabe when you're in Zimbabwe, you're talking about a guy who fought for all of us, who has made our life what it is, who has broken all barriers for access. We had serious denial of access. We are now able to access wealth. That's something that a black man would have never tested had Mugabe not been there. So that's the reality. He, he sort of gave you this. No, 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 no. No, I'm not saying literally. Oh, the literally opportunities. Said, yes. yes, he opened opportunities for us. We, we, we are who we are because Mugabe defines who we are. He speaks for all of us. He represents the person and ideals that a black man, an African man, who has suffered all sorts of discrimination, aspires to be. That's, that's the man.
We need cold water. Two. So two the, the supermarkets are full again? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the last time they I was here, there was nothing. I mean, how come everything is full again? Because immediately in 2009, we translated from our Zim dollar currency to US, or body currency. Things changed. The shelves are full. And you can basically buy anything you want. So when we had the hyperinflation here, we must have been dealing with <laughs> endless zeros. Yeah, we came into a situation where we went to trillions. Mm. Then we were talking about quintillions. Then mm. we were talking about hexillions. Mm. And you don't talk like that. You know, those numbers, you know, those words, those <laughs> whatever that is. You those get confused. You get yeah. confused. Yeah. Nobody knows which one is this. We're talking about zillions or something. <laughs> De tijden van hyperinflatie zijn dan wel voorbij, maar dit is de andere werkelijkheid. Nog altijd heeft 80% van de Zimbabwanen geen officiële baan en overleeft op de zwarte markt. De economie hangt met de vingertoppen aan de dakgoot. Als je naar iemand als Philips Young mag kijken, dan vraag je af hoe bestaat het dat je zo stinkend rijk kunt worden in deze economische chaos. Maar als je dan kijkt hoe die dat geld heeft gegaan, dan lijkt het erop dat... Hij niet rijk is geworden ondanks die economische chaos, maar juist dankzij. Want hij heeft in de jaren van crisis bedrijven op kunnen kopen voor werkelijk een peulenschil. Hij heeft gebruik kunnen maken van de hyperinflatie, waardoor hij huizen kon bouwen en die de volgende dag voor een duizendvoud kon verkopen. Dus de economische chaos is voor die politieke elite hier helemaal geen obstakel. Nee, het is een perfect instrument om stinkend rijk te worden. Barnabas Mdira, uh, een van de activisten, en daar heb ik nog steeds een nummer van. Ik was wondering if we could meet this week. Uh, all right, that's fine. Uh, that, that's fine with you. I'll talk to you, maybe we can meet on Thursday. We can come to your house if you want, if, if that's fine for you. We zijn nu in een buitenwijk van Harare waar voorheen heel veel aanhangers van de oppositiegroeperingen MDC woonden. Veel van die jongens zijn rond de verkiezingen 2008 verdwenen, sommige gemarteld, sommige ook vermoord. Zes jaar geleden rook de oppositie nog de overwinning op Mugabe, maar ze betaalde ook een hoge prijs. Ik keer terug naar een gezin van drie broers die de strijd aanvoerden. Twee zijn nog in leven. Ja. How's it going? Long time, long time. Yeah, thank you very much. Do you know who killed your brother? Uh, not actually, but just rumors. Rumors. But, but we know it was the state agents. Have you ever thought of revenge? <sighs> you can't revenge to, to those people. <laughs> they are always armed and stuff. So you can't think of anything of revenge. <laughs> it seems to me Mugabe always wins in the end. Uh, he doesn't win, he's always rigging. Yeah, but he's still there. <laughs> By force. <laughs> He's forcing himself to the people. If you go to the lawyer, they will tell you we didn't vote for him. Nobody voted for him. He's just forcing himself to the people. That's why you see the, the, the economy, the situation is going down. No, no investor wants to come and invest his money to, to, to the ZANPF government because of corruption. There's no control, there's no law. They can just come and take everything that we have. So, How old are you? I'm now 34. 34? So you were born in the year Mugabe came to power? Yes. Do you remember, what's your first memory of him? I used to like him in the 90s when I was growing up. Yeah. What did you like about him? I used to like uh, his speeches. I think the way, you know, it's like the Independence Day. We used to attend those days because we would just want to listen to Mugabe speaking. He was very good. And, um, but I think 1995, that's when things started falling, 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 falling. But basically, I, I, I used to like him very much. 
Like what? What did you admire about him? I think his policies, maybe. Maybe I was young. I didn't see much, but maybe his, his policies. Like what policies? Uh, we grew up, you know, it's like things were better. I remember when you were growing up, uh, we had a lot of things. Our life was much better. We could afford, my parents, you know, it's like we were five, but uh, our parents could afford to look after us. It was not that difficult like now. I've got two kids, but it's very difficult. Mm. That time it was not that difficult. We could have bread, a lot of things that we liked. Go to holidays, was things were a little Education? Bit, education was very good that time. We used to write Cambridge that time. So it was very good. He was giving us hope when we were growing up that you know you can do better, you can do this in life, it's easy and stuff like that, which was very good. And if you would have to give a speech on, on, on your dream about future Zimbabwe, what, what would it sound like? Today? Yeah. Mm. Terrible. <laughs> I see Zimbabwe... I see Zimbabwe is going west and west and west until there's change. I think the, I think Zimbabwe need to have the new need to have uh, new systems in place. Everything because the old horses, you know, it's like some of the ministers have been in power since 1987. They've been ministers, so you can see the level of corruption. So old men, old men, country so, of old men. Yeah, there, there's there's also a gap of generational difference. Uh. It's like what what I what, what I I like and what he thinks is right. And um, it's like uh, cha our Chamisa, Nelson Chamisa, uh -huh. our organizer was telling us that uh, the ICT minister can't operate a laptop. So, <laughs> you, so you see. The ICT minister can't operate a laptop. That's what he was saying. Last Sunday, at my book, we did all in my book, he was saying the minister of ICT can't operate a laptop. So you see, where is he taking our kids to if he can't do that? Het creëren van chaos werkt dus voor de machthebbers. Want chaos maakt de oppositie monddood of jaagt ze naar het buitenland. Een chaos leidt ook tot apathie onder de achterblijvers... die alleen nog maar bezig zijn met overleven. Hallo, hoe ben je? Heel fijn. Hoe was business? Ah, business is goed. Hé, is wat? Het is goed. Het is goed, ja? Ja. Dit is Hopely Farm, eigenlijk een plek net buiten de stad Harare, een plek waar het platteland al begint, zoals je kunt zien. En het is een plek waar heel veel oppositieaanhangers in de afgelopen jaren zijn heen gejaagd door de regering in uh, operatie Muran Batswina, wat zoiets betekent als uh, ruim het vuil op. En hier zijn ze allemaal terechtgekomen. Ze zijn er al een aantal jaren, dus je ziet dat de huizen inmiddels van steen zijn, niet meer van, van wrakhout. Since when do you live here? Uh, since, since 2007. 2007. Ah, okay. Yes. So why did you move here? Uh, because of uh, tsunami. Goes. The tsunami? Yes. yes. Murambatsvina? Yes. Yeah, Murambatsvina. Really? Yes. What, can you tell me what happened? Uh, we don't have the, the full the information. Mm. Where, where were you living before? In it's Highfield. Bad. In Highfield? Yes. That's in town, right? Yes. yes. And then they told you just get out of here? Yes. And break the unplanned houses. At that time they just sent the, the bulldozers to pull all the unplanned, unplanned houses. houses down. Every house. Every, every house was destroyed? Yes. Every um, house which was not on plan was destroyed. Yes. And every lodge has no accommodation. Do you know why they did that? Why did the police do that? I don't know. Did they ever give you a reason? No reason. No? Just no say reason. it's Mrambatrina. I don't want China. 
you know, they say Muramba China. We don't want dead. <laughs> That's the meaning of lean. Yeah. So actually, they said you are the dead. Yes. One day they will come and chase us yeah, away. Also, just yeah. the rumors. Just the rumors. <laughs> we are not clear that one that one. We are not here for a while. So you scared they will come again and clean this yeah, place out time again? They yes, come. They can come. <laughs> Why do you think they're doing it all the time? I really don't know. Uh, no? You don't talk about it with your friends? Why they're doing that? Uh, we do. uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they know. I don't know. Me, I don't know. Maybe others don't know. Maybe others know. Maybe, others know. <laughs> maybe, maybe the ladies know. Yes, know. You do not interfere in politics. You want to stay out of it? Yes. Yeah, I it's don't best. Know. Yeah, it's the best place for me. Yeah? <laughs> so guys, do you have work? I know. We do you have anything to do? Nothing. 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 How old are you? I'm 25. 25? Yeah. And when you, were, when you were still at school, what were you dreaming of to become when you were 25? What was your dream? <laughs> My dream was to be a driver. A driver? Yeah. yeah. You can still be a driver. So are you can I? I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, if there is an opportunity, I, I would be a driver. And I want to be a driver. No. I want to be someone else. I, I just wish this Zimbabwe would be nice someday. That's why I, I think, but I think I wish my, my daughter or my son to go to school and to, to go to work. But those, some people, they're not going to work. That's why I wish for. And I wish, hopefully, it will be so, so someday it will be nice. We have water, jobs. Children go to school, you can see children that are not going to school. Mm -hmm. They are staying at home. How old are you? I'm 27. 27? Yes. How many kids do you have? I have three. Three kids? Yes. Are you planning on having more children? No. I do not. Because I can't feed them. Geboren op 8 februari 2014 en gestorven op 4 maart. Nog geen maand oud. En de volgende. Geboren op 4 april 2012, gestorven 11 februari 2014. Dus dit zijn allemaal kinderen van soms een paar maanden oud, soms een paar jaar oud. Maar je kunt geen een monument vinden van de economische crisis in Zimbabwe als dit als deze begraafplaats. Piepjong, allemaal. Moet je kijken hoe dicht de begraafplaats op de nieuwste huizen in Hopi Farm liggen. Hier zijn juist zijn net hier verschenen tot aan de rand van de begraafplaats. Wat heel ongewoon is in Zimbabwe of in Afrika om zo dicht op een begraafplaats te gaan wonen. Zeker omdat de mensen hier geloven in geesten. En de voorouders en dat geesten van de doden nog steeds een directe invloed kunnen hebben op het leven nu hier op aarde. Is your kids? Yes. Because I see you, you live very close to the, Correct. To the cemetery. Yes, they are here. Yeah. Yes, surely we are very close. Mm. Isn't that scary? Yeah, it's scary mostly for our kids. Last, last month, one of my the daughter, three, three weeks, she died here. She was just saying, hi, hi, and her son was just sitting up inside the house here. I don't know what happened. Maybe it's true this, I don't know. Oh, I'm so sorry. Surely. You, you think she saw spirits? Yeah, maybe some, somewhere. Surely. Why did she die? I don't even understand, because she was just screaming and screaming and crying. You know, it's baby child, it's that baby an infant. We don't know what is taking place, but she was crying as if there's something above the room inside. Hey! 
hi, hi. Then he's screaming and screaming. We just took him to hospital. I took him to the hospital. We took him to Chungwiza. When uh, it was on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, then he died. She died Saturday. Where did you bury her? And she, you know, didn't bury her because just so we didn't have any money. Then we just left in, in Chungwiza for the hospital to, to bury her. So the hospital buried yes, the child? Yes, correct. Since I was poor enough. So why did you choose a house so close to the cemetery? I never choose. I never wish to choose. I got to be wa. Then go pay against kai kai area. Ah. Yeah, kai kai. Yeah, no choice. Seru ba seru. I have no choice since in that time. This time, pocket down here. Up to up to us. In deze wijk hoeven de bewoners weliswaar geen huur te betalen, maar ze moeten wel op de regeringspartij stemmen. Dat houden de partijbonzen hier scherp in de gaten. And who are you? Why may I ask? The chairman. I'm the chairman. You're the chairman? Yes. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you. I'm Bram. How are you? I'm okay. How are you? Yes. The government knows we're here. So you don't have to worry, chairman. Okay? It's all good. Everything's fine. This is directory minister Who controls the area now? Who's the boss? Uh, mm. under MP, member of parliament. Yes. Mm-hmm. He's from the ruling party. Yes. But did you vote for them? Yes. Why did you vote for them? In Chennai, the Nagaram Gurji, maybe it's going to change the open. Let me see. Ah, I'm going to be busy. 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 I'm So you don't have to stop for the police? No, I don't have to. They can follow if they want. <laughs> you never stop for the police? No, no, I won't. They will start asking you nonsense things that don't help me anyway. But everybody has to stop, right? I don't know who was in front of me. Did you see a car that we hit? <laughs> no, I saw police officers <laughs> saying stop. For what? For, for what? For just viewing the car? Or what was it about? <laughs> was it about the viewing of the car? <laughs> no, but I mean, there are many who can stop you. They want to see the Bentley. They stop you. They want to see the Rolls Royce. I mean, I don't have the time. And... Time is money. This, my house. This is your house. This is 18 bedrooms, 25 lounges. This is this house. What do you do with 18 bedrooms? Well, I built it. I knew in the future I would turn it into a hotel. Okay. Yeah. This is my dining room. Mm. The only most important guest I've ever brought into my dining room. Is the president of the Republic of Zimbabwe with his wife. Really? And his children when they were young, yeah. And what did you serve him? He likes his African traditional food. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you? Same, same. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. This, this is my main bed. I have 46, size 12. Okay, nine. Nine? Size nine. Unfortunately, yeah. I won't fit, but so these are these are very nice. This designer, yeah, mm. yeah. Most of the labels are designer labels. My, my shoes need some brushing. <laughs> it's embarrassing. 
You yeah, haven't even worn them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I planned even in those suitcases yes. lying there. They still got clothes on. <laughs> so, I mean, they're still filled with there's still new stuff in here. You see here? These are the new stuff in here. New stuff. Why so much, Mr. Shangwa? Well, I mean, look here. When, when you can afford it, why not have it? I think you have more than Imelda Marcos. I don't know about that. Those guys were different. Yeah. You see, if you run a country, yeah. if you have this, yeah. they think you have stolen the, from the vote. <laughs> I've never been anywhere near any post where I run any government ministry. I've never been into tenders. No, I work with the people. My money is from the people. That's you stayed away from politics? No, I've been in politics, but not for any uh, top dog position or anything. I'm not there mm. for nearly uh, more than a decade now. So, yeah, work out, make it. Uh, uh, Bill Gates is not into politics, neither is Mark Zuckerberg. Mm. He tells politicians what's right and wrong. Mm. Yeah. What is the pleasure of getting more if you already have so much? No, it's because you're working. You can't work and pile money somewhere. You gotta work and increase your assets, you know, increase your, your fifth dom you know, the domain under you. You, you, gotta, you gotta work. Was your father a rich man? No. My mother, no. It's just basic uh, peasants. Peasants? Yeah. Farming? People, yeah. People who just do very menial things. Yeah. So how did you get here then? Well, working hard, eh? No shortcuts. Often they say oh, shortcuts are wrong cuts. You know, so you work hard. Oh, but how did you come from a farmer's son yeah. to one of Zimbabwe's biggest? Yeah, I've seen people that have come from being vegetable vendors like me, uh, garden boys, uh, you know, guys who you never expected that went to the back room of a garage coming from Harvard University having uh, uh, fallen out and become billionaires. What kind of a man was your father? Hardworking, he was a politician, always arrested by the colonial regime, so... Uh, uh, he was a restricted detainee. I remember when I was young, my father being arrested in the house in the early hours of the morning, the pre-dawn raids in our ho small houses in Chegutu. Uh, you know, we were lying on the floor and the police would come in there. The white policemen come in there, the dogs enter my father's bedroom, grab him in his underwear and take him straight, straight through, incarcerate him. I visited him once, I remember, in Hartley Prison, where he was wearing tattered white clothes. And that's, that's, the, that's the life that I remember my father went through. And uh, you know what I mean? I, I cannot say that we can pro, 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 proceed in that main mentality. We're independent. The best, the best fight is to be economically free, to, to have as much money as I can have, let my family uh, and relatives enjoy that. Yeah, but so you, you're proving that a black man can become this wealthy. Exactly, exactly, in Zimbabwe. And we're back, and now on to our segment, Patriotism 101. To be patriotic, don't read between the lines, just read the lines. And in other news, Climate change scientists in Pennsylvania, USA, have unearthed undisputable facts that Zimbabwe is a great country. Zimbabwe is a great country. Unpatriotic elements have termed these power cuts. We in the party see this as an optimum time to facilitate romance in the nation. It is part of our family planning vision for 2015. We had a good Skype with, uh, with John Vlismus uh, earlier this week on, you know, on Zambezi News. He's definitely, <clears throat> he's definitely up for, um, for coming on board for, for season three. Oppositie voeren is uit de mode. Jongens in Babwane gebruiken nu satire in de strijd voor het nieuws in Babwe. En bereiken via internet en buitenlandse zenders een miljoenenpubliek. You know what we're trying to do with Magamba is be part of just laying the foundations of 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 a new Zimbabwe, which is, you know, based a lot on free expression and critical thinking. 
The last time I was here was in 2008. Do, do you think that the country has changed since then? And in, in what way? Well, there's, there's, now, there's now goods and stuff, but there's no money. Then there was money mm. and there was no goods. <laughs> That's a good way to look at it, yes. Yeah. We used to. Yeah. <laughs> If you have the money with nothing to buy in 2008, now there's a, you can buy anything, but there's But not, then no there money. was also a lot of political violence. I mean, do you yeah. feel more free these days than then? It's or? stabler, but you can't really compare to say, okay, I think it's better. It's like, okay, you were treated for your cancer, but now you're suffering from diabetes. <laughs> or you, you know, so it's like just yeah. the different states, but not necessarily saying it's, it's better it's or it's, it's worse. Best, it's just, yeah. It's, you know... So we've still got a long way to go. And also going through what you've gone through, it's also how you tackle situations. So you might find Zimbabweans not being as confrontational as they used to be. It can get to a point where it's like even apathy, where you're like, you know what, okay, do your politics and stuff. We're just going to live our lives outside of that sphere. Like, okay, you've got your president, cool. You've got your... So, you know, the, the so Zimbabweans have kind of given up on politics. Well, I have, not Zimbabweans. I can't speak for Zimbabweans. But, yeah. you know, there is that percentage where it's just like, you do your thing. You've got others that go for religion as their outlet. Others that'll go for politics as their outlet. Yes. And you go for humor. Satire. Yeah. Could you make fun out of the president in Zimbabwe these days? And, you mean and get, and get, and away, get away with, with it? No, of course not. Yeah. I mean, people get arrested for writing Facebook posts about the president, so... If one is putting that in a satirical program, of course there'll be there'll be blowback from that. But I think I mean I think what Art was saying is definitely what we do is we, you know, there are all these uh, political situations, be it be it to do with uh, you know elections and vote rigging, be it to do with internationalization, uh, sanctions. I mean, race, land. These are all issues that are kind of kind of burning issues in Zimbabwe that we aim to deal with. Uh, through Zambezi News and through creating all these mythical uh, characters that represent the different kind of demographics and the mad situation that we have in Zim. Are you a high power ruler? Do you often get stains from pesky journalists? Do you get marks from dirty opposition parties? Do you find foreign governments in your underwear? <laughs> it gets rid of pesky journalists after the first wash and turns dirty opposition parties into clean, obedient junior partners in your government. <laughs> You're making satire of, of a lot of things, of patriotism, of indigenization, I mean, of government politics. Yeah. So how come they allow this then? I, I think Zimbabwe is not, uh, it's, it's, it's quite complex uh, politically and it's not, it's, it's not black and white. It's not, uh, it's not North Korea or Iran in the sense of all dissenting voices um, are oppressed uh, and everyone's in a, in a labor camp. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying that as an absolute exaggeration. Um, you know, in, in Zimbabwe, there's definitely not, uh, we don't have... Uh, absolute freedom of expression and there's always that joke that in Zimbabwe we've got freedom of expression but not freedom after expression so we can do what we do but then we don't know what happens afterwards when we've finished with the show and we've made everyone laugh what happens afterwards because that's often where the you know the blowback comes um, and I think also I mean what you've got is in Zimbabwe is you know the is Zanu PF trying to portray uh, a semblance of democracy. So we do have elections, <clears throat> we do have civil society, we do have independent media, um, but it's not a fully free civil society, it's not uh, a fully free independent media. Um, they will arrest someone for a critical theatre play um, so that 20 other scriptwriters are worried about writing something that's politically challenging. They do the same online. They arrest someone for posting a Mugabe comment on Facebook so that another 2,000 people are worried about posting anything online. So it's also about inculcating self-censorship among citizens.
my song was banned. <laughs> but uh, you say with a sense of pride. <laughs> yeah, my song was was banned. But at the end of the day, now the they're playing the song because then they you know so many people listen to my music when I play like live shows so now people have come to to request the song because it touches their hearts so now my my songs have been on airplay for a long time now when did this happen when was your song band? that was 2007 could this still happen today in Zimbabwe that um, songs would be banned now they don't they don't because you know what, uh, I, they are now, we used to have one station, one TV station, and uh, like one radio station. Now the government has opened a way that we're going to have 25 channels of radio, 25 channels of TV. So that has brought growth even to some small towns, because now anyone can own a station and broadcast what they want. So that, that is open. So now I would say blocking, it's a bit difficult. How, how come this all this is all happening? What what has changed in Zimbabwe? Um, I, I think um, uh, maturity also comes to, to 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 play as well, because I would say Zimbabweans most Zimbabweans are so educated. I would say we have in every society you have people who don't understand you and people who understand you, but it it needs a, someone who has the guts to explain what you mean and what you say so that they can adopt like, just like a parent you know sometime back our parents used to uh, stop us with mean skates and to go out in the clubs at night it was just prohibited but now you see so many youths coming out you know what i mean they, they've come to open up in the next country right now what i believe which is going to blow in the music industry is zimbabwe because we've got we've got we've got so much talent in music in theater in, in uh, dance in in, in athletics, there's so many things I've seen, and I'm so proud to be one to be in this life where things are exploding in Zimbabwe. I can guarantee you, there's no country which has got music that's so fresh like Zim music right now. Go do it. Yes, why not? Go Tonight it's gonna be bad. Right, right, let's, let's, let's have a look. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Zimbabwe worstelt nog steeds met zijn zelfgemaakte crisis. Maar politiek bleek niet de manier om uit die crisis te komen. Zimbabwanen vinden nu een andere stem om te zeggen wat ze denken. Hun eigen stem. Thank you for watching. If you like this, please check here for the next episode or for other recommended series. And don't forget to subscribe if you want updates on upcoming new travel series. <laughs> <laughs>